My name is Steve Savage. I'm uh, trained as a plant pathologist who study plant diseases. I worked several years for DuPont and then for a, a biotech company called Mycogen and then for 16 years I've been uh, consulting. You're going to hear a lot more about coffee rust, but my, my role here is to sort of put this into the perspective of diseases that have affected other crops. And basically all crops have pests, and some of them have very challenging pests. And also, like coffee, there have been events both historical and going on today where a problem that wasn't a big problem becomes a big problem, and that's kind of what coffee is facing. Over the years, I've been involved in all sorts of different crops. My first introduction to agriculture really was uh, graduate work was on diseases of grapes, and uh, so all my research, field research was in Napa Valley, which was kind of spoiled me for, for, from then on, but uh, done projects having to do with all sorts of other crops around the world, and even also insects and weeds and nematodes and things like that. All of these grapes are in the species Vitis vinifera, and that's like the Arabica of the grape world. Now, in the New World, there are five or six species of native grapes. You're probably most familiar with the Concord grapes, that's Vitis labrusca. Maybe you've heard of Scuppermong grapes, which grow in the southeastern United States, and that's called Vitis rotundifolia. Now, these grape species had a disease called grape downy mildew. It's, it's actually somewhat related to the potato late blight pathogen. And it doesn't cause that much trouble on the Native American grapes. But the English, when they were in their exploratory mode, had this habit of wanting to bring back some of every plant from everywhere they went around the world to their greenhouses and their gardens. And in the process, they brought grape downy mildew to Europe. And when it got to the continent, it started devastating grape production there, like in the 1870s. And it was a serious threat to the future of, of the grape industry. One of the major ways that fungal diseases are controlled around the world is with fungicides. And most people, when they hear the term pesticide, they're, they're assuming something and are imagining usually something uh, probably out of a 1950s uh, range. And uh, over the years, there have been billions of dollars spent uh, searching for new, better uh, options. And there are quite a few of these which are, the way the EPA classifies them is as essentially non-toxic. And many of them have very benign uh, environmental profiles as well. So, Really, the, the, the whole perspective here is that coffee is facing a particular challenge right now with a disease. That's not unusual. Most of the crops of the world have disease problems, and these are not completely insoluble. The options are basically escape the weather, create your own weather, use fungicides, or do genetics. But that's really what it comes down to. I think it's really commendable that the coffee industry has already been investing in a lot of the basic homework to understand the genetics of coffee, to maybe be able to take advantage of some of these advances in terms of marker-assisted selection and things like that in the future. You join the chocolate industry in doing the same sort of thing, and if it's any comfort, cacao has a lot more pest problems than coffee does. I think one thing that will probably happen with the coffee rust situation is that with some of the technical input that's going on and some of the funding for fungicides and whatnot, people will probably learn to get better at managing the disease. Um, I think because this sort of took the industry by surprise in terms of the timing, in terms of knowing what to do, um, you know, it, it was worse than it, that it maybe has to be. So I think there's some hope for a short-term solution, at least with fungicides, and then possibly a, a longer-term uh, genetics option. In the meantime, you probably will see coffee production shifting to drier areas, like parts of Brazil.